In this video, we will do the exam review of the disorders that may cause ascending or descending type of weakness and paralysis. We will compare and discuss myasthenia gravis, Guillain-Barre syndrome, botulism, Lombardy-Eaton myasthenic syndrome and Miller-Fisher syndrome. And we will also discuss their differences in their clinical features, pathology, investigations and treatment. So let's discuss the differences in the paralysis or weakness of these disorders. In Guillain-Barre syndrome, there is is ascending symmetrical paralysis which is abrupt in onset and begins in the lower limb and it ascends upward whereas in botulism there is descending symmetrical paralysis so in gain bar there is ascending symmetrical paralysis and in botulism there is descending symmetrical paralysis so both are symmetrical one is ascending the other is descending whereas in myasthenia gravis there is descending asymmetric weakness botulism has descending symmetric symmetrical weakness whereas myasthenia has descending asymmetric weakness and there is involvement of the extraocular muscles early in myasthenia gravis with ptosis and dysphagia. So in GBS there is ascending symmetrical and in botulism there is descending symmetrical paralysis whereas in myasthenia there is descending asymmetric weakness with the involvement of the extraocular muscle. Whereas in LEMS, Lambert Eaton myasthenic syndrome, it affects the lower limb more than the other parts and involves the eye muscles with ptosis and diplopia. Easy mnemonics to remember the parts affected is LEMS, L for the lower limbs and EMS for extraocular muscle involvement. Whereas in Miller Fisher syndrome, which is a variant of Guillain Barr syndrome, there is ataxia and areflexia with involvement of the eye muscles and there is ophthalmoplegia and pupillary paralysis, but there is no weakness. So ascending or descending paralysis in GBS, botulism, and my and lower limbs affected in LEMS and in Miller Fisher syndrome there is ataxia and reflexia without weakness with ophthalmoplegia. Now etiology of this disorder. Guillain Barr syndrome is due to anti-gangliocide antibodies and there is preceding infection about one to three weeks before Guillain Barr syndrome, most commonly with Campylobacter jejuni in 70% cases and cytomegalovirus and Epstein Barr virus are also involved in causing. GBS. Where the etiology of botulism is Clostridium botulinum that produces a neurotoxin. It's a gram positive anaerobic rod that has a subterminal spore and it is the most potent bacterial toxin known that is produced by Clostridium botulinum. In Mycenae grievous, the antibodies are against the acetylcholine receptor and muscle kinase antibodies and destroy these postsynaptic nerve terminals. In in LEMS, the antibodies are against the gated calcium channels and are present at the presynaptic nerve terminal. And in Miller Fisher syndrome, the anti gangliocide antibodies GQ1B are present in more than 90% of cases. This is the site of action in the botulism. This is this is a presynaptic blocks the release of acetylcholine from the presynaptic terminal. Similarly, there are antibody against the gated calcium channel in Lambert Eaton myasthenic syndrome and, and in Miller Fisher syndrome also GQ1B antibodies that blocks the presynaptic release of acetylcholine. Whereas in myasthenia grievous, these are the receptor at the postsynaptic membranes, the anti-gangliocide antibodies destroyed these receptors. So three of these disorders are due to presynaptic abnormalities that is LEMS, Miller-Fisher syndrome and botulism whereas myasthenia gravis is the only one of these five that the defect is postsynaptic where the anti-acetylcholine receptor antibodies and musk antibody destroy the receptors whereas Guillain-Barre syndrome is the only one that affects the peripheral nerves affecting the myelin sheet and the axon. Now the pathology of these disorders. In Guillain-Barre syndrome, as I already told, antibody damage the myelin sheet. So the defect is in the peripheral nerves. The T antigens attack the myelin sheet. There are two types of Guillain-Barre syndrome, demyelination and axonal damage type. In demyelination, there is recovery and in axonal type, recovery is poor. Number two, botulism. Toxin blocks the acetylcholine release at the presynaptic terminal. Number three, in myasthenia grievous, antibodies block and destroy the 
receptors and damage the membrane. These are the receptor destroyed by the acetylcholine receptor antibodies at a postsynaptic terminal. And in LEMS, antibodies interfere with the release of acetylcholine pre from presynaptic nerve terminal. LEMS, presynaptic blockade of the release of acetylcholine. And in Miller-Fisher syndrome, the GQ1B gangliocyte antibodies also block the presynaptic release of acetylcholine. Now, differences in the clinical features of these disorders. In Ginbar syndrome, that causes descending symmetrical paralysis, there is areflexia and the patient is afebrile with loss of position sense and the patient feels rubbery legs. Whereas in botulism, the patient is also afebrile. Patient afebrile in both GBS and in botulism. But in botulism, there is severe constipation and a cranial nerve involvement in botulism causes the 6 or 7D formula diplopia, drooping, dysphagia, dysarthria, dilated fixed pupil in 50% of cases and these patients have normal functioning CNS, sensations and orientation and the GI symptoms of botulism are absent in two types of botulism, the wound botulism and in bioterrorism. In myasthenia gravis where there are two types that only involve extraocular muscle and the other one that involve both extraocular muscles and the general muscle involvement. It causes asymmetric descending weakness. The weakness increases with repeated muscle use or muscle fatigue increases. The weakness is more in the evening and improves after taking rest just like the improvement in angina pectoris and facial nerve involvement in myasthenia causes a snarling appearance on a smile there is dysphagia and in myasthenia gravis the reflexes are normal whereas there is a reflexia in Girbar syndrome but in myasthenia there is normal reflexes in LEMS there is weakness of the proximal muscles of the lower limb as I already told involvement is that of the lower limb and extraocular muscles muscles. LEM mnemonics. There is ptosis, diplopia and the weakness decreases with repeated use of muscle whereas weakness increases with repeated use of muscles. In myasthenia, LEMS resembles myasthenia in many cases but here the muscle weakness decreases with the repeated use of the muscle whereas in myasthenia the weakness increases with the repeated use of muscle. In LEMS there is a reflexia and decreased or absent deep tendon reflexes whereas in myasthenia the reflexes are normal. LEMS is associated with small cell lung tumors whereas in myasthenia there is thymoma. In Miller Fisher syndrome there is ataxia and areflexia and extraocular muscles affected more than the other muscles and there also occur ophthalmoplegia and pupillary paralysis but there is no weakness in Miller Fisher syndrome. So areflexia occurring in Miller Fisher syndrome, in Guillain Barr syndrome and also in LEMS. EMS. So LEMS, Miller-Fisher syndrome and Gerbar syndrome have a reflexia. Now investigations in these disorders. In Gerbar syndrome there is conduction block in the demyelinating type of Gerbar syndrome and in the other type or axonal type there is decreased action potential amplitude. So conduction block in demyelinating variety and decreased action potential amplitude in axonal variety of Gerbar syndrome. And in Gerbar syndrome we also have albuminosis cytologic dissociation that is increased proteins and normal cell count. Investigation done in botulism, serum bioassay in, in the mice is definite and also organism and toxin may be isolated from vomitus, wound and the gastric fluid depending on the type. Nerve conduction velocity is normal in botulism but there is decreased action potential amplitude. Decreased action potential amplitude also occur in the external type of Kenbar syndrome. In myasthenia gravis, positive tensilon test and 10 to 15 percent decrease in action potential amplitude. So action potential amplitude is decreased in all three Kenbar syndrome axonal type in the motilism and in the myasthenia grievous. Repeated nerve stimulation in myasthenia increases the muscle weakness and MRI of thymus in myasthenia shows hyperplasia, germinal cells and muscle like cells that produce autoantibodies that destroy the receptors and in LEMS the radio immunoassay detects the antibodies and repeated nerve stimulation increases muscle contraction whereas repeated nerve stimulation in myasthenia decreases 
increases the power in the muscle or increases the weakness and in LEMS investigation for the small cell lung tumor should be done and in miller fisher syndrome anti-gangliocyte antibodies gq1b are present now treatment of the disorder kien bar syndrome early immunosuppression because if the disorder is if lasts more than two weeks and the treatment is not started then it doesn't improve the condition iv immunoglobulin or plasma pharesis are given and if vitus capacity is less than 30 percent then mechanical ventilation is done in bottom human or equine antitoxin is given and if vital capacity is less than 30 percent mechanical ventilation is done in myasthenia pyridoxamine which is an acetylcholine esterase inhibitor and also immunosuppression plasma pharesis or iv immunoglobulin is given or thymectomy is done if there is thymoma so immunosuppression iv immunoglobulin or plasma pharesis given in all the three conditions guillain bar syndrome myasthenia gravis and lems and miller fisher syndrome is like gbs so treatment is similar to that